Story 1. Ages ago, I worked a front-line job at City Hall. My job involved registering cars and dogs, collecting payments for parking tickets, property taxes, and the like. I was basically an entry-level municipal finance grunt, at the very bottom of the food chain, nowhere near being the one making the ordinances or rules. Just a grunt. This was way before the days of taking credit or debit cards for payments, before smartphones, and before online banking really took off. It was all paper, paper, paper. The city's ordinance on tax interest stated that interest would accrue daily on any past due tax bills at a specific rate per year. Property taxes were due quarterly. On tax due dates, many people would come in to pay in cash, while many more sent checks through the mail. We kept extremely thorough paper records of all payments received, including the remittance stub and the envelope showing the postmark. The postmark date was crucial if it was before or on the due date. No interest was charged. These records were batched daily by each clerk and stored in the vault, so anyone who needed to could find any receipt or remittance quickly. We often needed to, as did the city auditor. Business as usual meant that, a few days after the tax due date, we'd get some late payments through the mail. Daily interest would start adding up, but it wasn't much just a few cents a day for most homeowners. We'd send them a receipt in the mail with a note explaining they now had a small balance due to accrued interest. We'd hold that amount for 10 days. Most people would send another check, some would ignore it, and others would come in to pay in person. And then, one day, the stars aligned, and I got one. A real peach of a guy came in, furious about the bill he received for what he called this got him interest nonsense. He slammed the bill down on the counter, inches from my face, and then followed it up by slamming a repurposed melatonin bottle full of pennies on top of it. Entitled customer, I hope whoever sent me this bill has to count these goddamn pennies. He was shouting loud enough for everyone in City Hall to hear. I could already tell it was my bill my initials were on the receipt when he slapped it down. Cue malicious compliance. I smiled as brightly as I could and said, I'll find out who processed this for you before grabbing his receipt and heading straight to the vault. I didn't give him enough time to react. I just got up and cheerfully said, it'll just be a minute, and disappeared from his sight. In the vault, I found the paperwork, including his postmarked envelope, which was two days late. Armed with that, I returned to my desk, picked up the melatonin bottle, and looked him right in the eye. Me? You're in luck today, sir. I'm the one who sent you that balance due so I'll be happy to count these pennies for you. And so, I did. I counted all 39 of those pennies one by one. Very, very thoroughly. It took about 20 minutes from the moment that bottle hit the counter to the moment I finished. I made sure to be extremely pleasant, cordial, and smiling the whole time. Honestly, it was fun at that point, so I kept pouring on the sweetness. By the time I was done, his face had turned a deep shade of purple, as he slunk out the door, clearly not getting the smug satisfaction he'd hoped for when he slammed that bottle down, I called out after him with a cheery tone. Me. Have a great rest of your day. The weather's beautiful. And indeed, it was. Story 2. In my last relationship, I lived with my husband, Danny, in a duplex owned by his mother, Donna. We lived on one side, and his mother and brother lived on the other. Donna was a very abusive person and took great joy in belittling me and tormenting me at every opportunity. She seemed to take extra pride whenever she succeeded in making me cry. Danny was a professional cook, and he would often prepare enough food for his mother, in addition to ourselves. On the occasions when I cooked, Donna also expected to be served dinner. One dish I made frequently was chili. Both Danny and his mother loved my chili, but they both preferred it spicy. I never made it spicy because I have a sensitive stomach. Danny would just add hot sauce to his serving, and that was the end of it. However, Donna would complain endlessly about the chili not being spicy, even going so far as to demand that I make the next batch spicier just for her. I told her I wasn't going to do that because I wouldn't be able to eat it. She basically told me that what I wanted didn't matter since she was gracious enough to allow me to live in her home. 
I responded that if she wanted it spicy, she could add hot sauce like Danny did or make her own chili. The next time Danny told her I was making chili, Donna came over while I was cooking and hovered around, demanding I add various ingredients to make it spicier. I firmly told her that I was making my chili the way I wanted and that she could either go home and wait for it to be done or find something else to eat. She eventually left, and I continued cooking. Now, Danny fancied himself a bit of a hot sauce connoisseur and had never found a sauce too spicy for him. The previous Christmas, I had bought him a bottle of Carolina Reaper Puri. When the chili was ready, Danny asked me to prepare a Tupperware container of chili for his mother while he used the bathroom, and he'd take it to her when he was done. So, like the good little wifey I was, I dished up the chili for Donna only, I added a heaping tablespoon of that Carolina Reaper puree, I mixed it in really well, topped it with shredded cheese, and closed the container, ready for delivery. Danny finished in the bathroom, delivered the chili, and we sat down to eat. About thirty minutes later, his phone rang. Danny liked to have his conversations on speaker, and this time, I was grateful. Donna. Danny, something is wrong. Danny, what's wrong, Mom? Donna, this chili. Oh, it's burning me up. What did your wife do to this chili? Danny looked at me, confused, and I just shrugged. Danny, she didn't do anything. It's just her normal chili. What did you add to it, Mom? Donna, I added a little sriracha, but that shouldn't be this hot. Danny, well... Maybe you added too much? Donna. That hateful woman did something to my chili. Danny, I'm going to get her. Danny. Calm down. Ma, you're overreacting. Donna. I want her out of my house. Danny. You can't kick her out over chili. Mom. Donna. Watch me. She hung up the phone. Danny turned to me and asked, Did you really do something to her chili? I smiled sweetly and said, she wanted it spicy? It's definitely spicy. There were no real consequences aside from her cursing me out. On the plus side, Donna never asked for my chili again. Story 3 Here is a revised version of the content with grammatical and punctuation errors fixed, proper paragraph breaks, expletives replaced, and acronyms initials expanded. My toddler has evolved into a small child and my small child is now in an adult male body, which is, unfortunately, still outfitted with a teenage brain. Don't worry though, he knows everything. I myself have a late 30s model body, but my teenage brain is coming along well. That said, my loving wife is still able to maintain her sanity with 2.5 boys and 0.5 male adults in the house. However, the house was too small and we needed more legroom. We decided to move on up. The new house is everything we wanted. There is ample room for the growing family. The boys would conquer the upstairs and even have their own bathroom to grow science experiments. They occasionally fail to brush their teeth, but you can most certainly count on them to urinate in on everything except the toilet. Cake, my 11-year-old small child, shares my obsessive compulsive disorder and keeps his room in working order. Kelly, my 15-year-old man-child genius, well, just don't touch that sock under his bed. Typical boy behavior, I suppose. My wife and I now had a backyard. We had a two-car garage to store her Christmas and Halloween decorations. The neighborhood is gorgeous, and I can literally walk to the clubhouse and play a round of golf. The cul-de-sac we live on is dominated by currently serving or retired military families. Everyone was extremely welcoming at the homeowners association and the neighbors were all friendly. Well, at least for the moment. I have read about neighbor horror stories. I have seen them on television. I never in a million years thought I would live next to them. I am a gunfighter by trade. Believe it or not, I don't like war. I like my job, but I don't enjoy the carnage of war. I am a realist though. I would totally cast my ballot for world peace, but I know it only takes one inconsiderate person to ruin it for everyone. My immediate neighbors became those inconsiderate people. Enter the entitled parents, Kevin and Karen. They seemed nice at first. They were both really helpful, especially Kevin. 
Kevin had served in the Air Force, and Karen was a stay-at-home mother. They enlightened me regarding the neighborhood, the quality of the area schools, and told me the tips and tricks to avoid any hassle with the Home Owners Association. Really great, right? Coronavirus Disease 2019 Zombie Apocalypse The onset of Coronavirus Disease 2019 forced the school district to cancel the remainder of the school year so the boys didn't turn into zombies. However, the mass hysteria allowed my humanoids to become semi-professional Fortnite gamers, who smelled like ball funk, and survived on soda and zebra cakes. They were quickly becoming chubby bunnies. I, being neighborly, informed Kevin and Karen that I would be in the market for a portable basketball hoop to combat childhood obesity and type Roman 2 diabetes. Side note, I remember things. It can be quite literally a matter of life or death in my occupation, so I remember things vividly. Original poster, pleasantries, some other words. I am thinking about getting a basketball hoop for the boys. Karen, that's great. It's so good to have young children in the neighborhood again. Kevin, you know you can't put it in the street, right? It is against homeowners association rules. Kevin is a rules guy. Original poster, well aware. I will be putting it on the back pad. Karen, that's great. If the ball ever goes over the fence, just tell them to come get it. Awesome. It was a positive interaction, and they had no issue. Onward to Walmart. My children are well behaved. They may act like little troublemakers to each other and inside the house, but they are both kind and courteous to others. Despite Karen's instructions, I told them to knock on the door if the ball ever goes over the fence. So they did. First bounce over. My door, knock, knock, knock. Original poster, hey Kevin, how can I help you? Kevin, annoyed the ball went over the fence. Original poster, did the boys knock and ask to get it? Kevin, yes, I just wanted to let you know. I spoke to my wife afterwards. That was odd, was all I could think. Is the guy going to let me know each time the ball goes over the fence? Maybe I should knock on his door? Hey Kevin, just wanted to let you know that your car is parked in the driveway. This process quickly became a routine for Kevin. Kevin became a self-licking ice cream cone. Kevin came over six times over the course of about three months. My wife began keeping tallies because it was odd and, but somewhat comical. Then things started to get real. Cake came running in the house scared. He had tears in his eyes, and he was continually reiterating, I didn't do anything wrong. Nobody has accused me of being world's best dad, so I was wondering if he did in fact do something wrong. I forego waterboarding Cake this time, and ask what he is talking about. Cake stated, Karen is recording me. What? I look outside and sure enough, I see Karen at the fence and pointing her cell phone at me as if it was a loaded gun. I think, well darn it, because I know my wife is going to lose her composure. She did. My wife is dainty, but she quickly turned into a 411 Muhammad Ali. Man, it took every ounce of verbal reasoning for me to stop her from physically rearranging Karen's facial features. In addition to remembering things for work, I have to be well-read regarding the laws that govern me as an American, and the local laws. I knew Karen's tactic to scare and record cake was immoral and unethical, but it was perfectly legal. This didn't sit well with my wife, though. I reminded the wife that I have a doctorate in revenge from Feckless University and this would not go unanswered. I can be difficult too, but I am a methodical type of difficult. I did my best to erect makeshift barriers as a temporary solution. It was not perfect, but at least it showed that we were doing everything in our power to prevent balls from going over the fence. I also submitted plans for a permanent structure to the Home Owners Association. I was going to build a hanging herb garden wall, but it required approval before construction could start. The typical approval timeline was two weeks, but in addition to affecting Earth, coronavirus disease 2019 also affected the approval process. I was in limbo. Tragically, another basketball fell victim to the senseless violence. It was the ninth basketball in approximately eight months. The kids were terrified to ask for their basketball back, and it wasn't even worth the hassle anymore. That didn't stop Kevin, though. 
Ninth bounce over. Knock, knock, knock. Ken, original poster home? Wife, yes, but he injured his back. How can I help you? Ken, get sloppy, please. I should mention that Kevin is outwardly sexist and is not a fan of coloreds. Wife, Kevin, sloppy, can't even walk right now. How can I help you? Ken, the basketball went over the fence again. It needs to stop. They need to stop playing basketball. He was now telling my wife how to parent. Good luck, buddy. Wife, I am sorry the ball went over the fence. We continue to tell the children to be careful, but I am not going to tell them they can't play basketball in their own yard. Ken, you'll tell your boys to stop playing. If the ball comes over the fence again, we are calling the cops. Tell your boys to stay out of our yard. They're trespassing. Wife, if you want to call the cops, then you go ahead and do it. However, the boys do not go in your yard at all anymore. I was losing my composure in the bedroom. I could hear the conversation, but I physically could not make the front door. I managed to slide off the bed and began my army crawl to the door, but I was late. My wife was fuming and I was upset and pathetically crawling on the floor. Yay back injuries. We had no intention of starting a war, but the boys were doing nothing wrong. We had informed Kevin we were getting a hoop, and they had zero issues with it. What was going on? Tenth bounce over. The cops are called. The original poster city police department sent two cruisers. The children may be 11 and 15, but all be damned if they don't go down without a fight. One cruiser was not going to suffice. You'd better send two for my miscreants. I just sat in my garage man cave and watch it all play out. The cops go to the neighbor's house first. They are there for more than an hour, and I can only assume we are being painted as horrible neighbors. Oh well, it is now pitch dark outside, and I was startled by the time an officer approaches. Officer John Kimball, hello, sir? Original poster, holy moly, you scared me. Officer Kimball, sorry, hi, I am Officer Kimball with Original Poster City Police Department. How are you doing this evening? Original poster. Typically, I would say fine, but I don't typically have a cop in my garage. Officer Kimball, I understand. The reason we are here is because the neighbors called about trespassing. Now, they said nobody went in their yard today, but they want you to understand they will press charges next time. I was baffled. I did my best to maintain my composure, but I am certain my face was screaming. Are you serious? Officer Kimball then pointed at his body camera and mouthed, recording, and then gave me a thumbs-up gesture. I immediately seized the opportunity to joke with him. Sorry, it's in my nature. Original poster, do you want another beer? You can't just drink one. Officer Kimball, laughing what? I didn't have a beer with you. Original poster, laughing as well. I'm kidding, and we are fully aware of their intent to press charges. I will be sure to do my best to prepare my boys for the rigors of prison life, too. I think jail will be good for them, too. May even toughen them up a bit. Officer Kimball, laughing okay, sir. I just want to ensure that you are aware. Ideally, we would like to see neighbors talk things like this out and not call the cops. Unfortunately, this is what it's come to. I just want to ensure you are aware. Original poster, tracking. Officer Kimball, you have a good evening, sir. Original poster, thanks. Officer Kimball then walked back to his patrol car. He didn't leave, though. I assume he was just finishing mundane paperwork, but he was there for at least 20 minutes. Then, much to my surprise, he returned and was a completely different officer. Officer Kimball, hey man. Original poster, back for that beer? Officer Kimball, laughing no. Sorry, man. I have to play the game for the body cam. Original poster, I hear you. I occasionally wear one at work, but it only cuts back on my cussing. People still get shot. Officer Kimball, you army? Original poster, yup. Officer Kimball, cool. What do you do? Original poster, shoot fist, shoot often, and have my story straight before the cops arrive. Officer Kimball, Laughing I figure as much after looking at all your stuff here. I just wanted to talk to you without the camera. 
They really seem eager to press chargers if your children are caught in their yard. Original poster, laughing. My wife and I have concluded that. Officer Kimball, that lady is not right in the head. My God, she demanded we arrest your children tonight. Original poster, tonight. Officer Kimball, yes, she said they trespassed before, and she wanted to press charges now. Original poster, more laughing. I am sorry you have to deal with this brother. I really am. I can ensure you that they have never gone in their yard without permission. Not once. They are terrified of her. She taunts them from the other side of the fence and records them. Seriously, they are scared of her. We now chalk the balls up as a loss. Officer Kimball, I believe you. There is something not right with that lady. She said the basketball wakes her son up, and she will not hesitate press charges. I told her we would do our duty, but I don't think the magistrate will not view the situation kindly if we arrest two children for playing basketball. She clearly does not care, though. I just wanted to chat with you, and without the body cam, I can't exactly call her crazy while it is running. Officer John Kimball stayed for another hour. He was impressed with the collection of war memorabilia and the setup of my garage man cave. He was specifically intrigued with my Nintendo and working copy of Mike Tyson Punch-Out, among other classics. Yes, it's certainly cool, but it has little to do with the story. Shoot, Met fan. My wife was mowing the grass, and I was currently doing things I never thought would be a priority of mine, planting a new flowerbed. Kevin and Karen had just returned from another chick fill a run. Then the unthinkable happened. Kevin exited the car and immediately approached me, and he was angry. Kevin, your boys went into my yard and got a ball today. They may think we didn't notice, but we did. You need to tell those boys to stay out of my yard or... Original poster, wait a minute. I don't tolerate people who lie, cheat, or steal, and you are lying right now. Kevin, your boys were. Original poster, we were at an all-day soccer tournament in different state. We have only been home for a couple hours. They have not played any basketball since we have been home. You're lying. Kevin, well, we are sick of them getting balls from our yard without permission. Original poster, look Kevin, I get it. However, you fail to recall when your wife said the boys were more than welcome to go in the yard and... I didn't even get to finish when I heard the screech of Karen. I know my writing style is different, to say the least. I wish I was better. I do not have the words to accurately articulate the sound Karen made, but I will do my best. It was like the Tyrannosaurus from Jurassic Park making love to, to a nuclear explosion during a tornado, but way louder. The only thing that honestly makes this worse, and I kid you not, is that she is a dead ringer for Carol Baskin Tiger King. Not, maybe a little, but more, holy moly Carol Baskin is your neighbor type of resemblance. Karen, I never said that. I would never say that. She screamed at the top of her lungs a mere inches from my face. I could smell the meow mix bellow from her scream factory. Meanwhile, Kevin pulled a Houdini and vanished. Kevin is a passive-aggressive inconsiderate person and direct confrontation scares him off. Original poster, yes. You did. Karen, I never said that. You're wrong. Original poster, whatever. It's not even worth it. Karen, I am so sick of your heathens going in my yard. Your heathens better not go in my yard again, or I will have them arrested. I know the law. The, I know the law statement, really rubbed me wrong. I was about to open my mouth and respond, but my wife was on her like stink on manure which led me to believe Karen is louder than a lawnmower. My wife was still seething about Karen recording the humans. Wife, they don't go in your yard, and they are good children. They are not heathens. You better stop recording my children. Karen, oh shut up. You guys are white trash. Your children play in the street and run around the neighborhood like criminals. They broke my mulch too, yes. She said they broke the mulch. Everybody knows you're trash. Just. Stupid. White. Trash. I am now thinking, oh no, and semi-worried about Karen's future health as an active participant of living humans. 
I think my wife wanted to expire Karen's shelf life. Wife, excuse me? My children never play in the street. You're recording them, and... Karen, just shut up. You're stupid. You're just plain stupid. I can record them if I want. No wonder you don't have jobs. Wife, I have three advanced degrees. We are working from home. We are not. Here is a revised version of the content with grammatical and punctuation errors fixed, proper paragraph breaks, expletives replaced, and acronyms initials expanded. Karen, you are, you're trashy and stupid, and both your children are stupid. I had enough. There was no point in arguing either. Mark Twain stated, Never argue with a fool. They will drag you down to their level and beat you with experience. Mark is correct, and Karen was trying to drag us down. Well, I don't know why, but I remember something that Kevin discussed with me when we first moved in. The darn trees. They have a large maple tree, and they have a juniper tree. Kevin always told me they were in the process of contracting a company to crown and lift the maple tree. Furthermore, they were going to get the juniper tree off my fence. Dear reader, I know the law too. I can legally trim anything that goes over my property line. Now all those pointless conversations were making sense. It was my time to join this exciting game called Petinus. Original poster, Karen. You have until Sunday to get your juniper off my fence. Karen, shut up. I told you we were going to get it handled this fall. Original poster, it's June. You have until Sunday. Karen, or what? I allow my wife to rejoin the conversation, and I retreat to the garage. Then I grab my clippers and prune a good couple inches of the juniper tree and lay them at her feet. QT Rex fighting a volcano voice. Karen, what the heck do you think you are doing? I told you it will be done this fall. Original poster, you have until Saturday now. Karen, you are dumb too. Just like your wife, aren't you? My intelligence may have been debatable, but I suppose it was time to repeat the process. I now return with about two feet of tree and place it at her feet. I am like Mo Mo McFudge of Fudge Fudge Lady. Original poster, you have until Friday. Karen, you better not touch my tree again. I will call the cops and have you thrown in jail tonight. You're so dumb, aren't you? Now I see where you children get it from. Original poster, I know the law too, Karen. I will be back in a minute with some more of your juniper tree. Karen, Kevin. Kevin. Kevin I again return to the tree. I now have another two feet of juniper tree to place at her feet. The more she screams, the smaller her tree becomes. It was an enjoyable game of cause and effect. Meanwhile, I see Kevin and Kevin Jr. running like Usain Bolt to secure their tree with toe straps. Karen, I hope you're happy. You are terrible people. You are both terrible parents, and your children are heathens. I am sick of ball bouncing and waking my son up too. You people need to move. You're just horrible parents. Horrible. Screaming louder horrible parents. Dear reader, I had enough. I was at critical mass. I was going to explode. Karen continued to yell at my wife, and I was zoning out. It was comical to watch Kevin and Kevin Jr. secure the tree to their porch in order to get it off the fence. Once complete, they quickly made their way back to the one-sided screaming party. Karen, horrible parents. Look what they did to my poor tree. Kevin, I think we should call the cops, dear. Karen, horrible parents. I feel sorry for your kids and... Original poster, just be quiet. I raked up 21 bags of leaves this past fall. 21. Funny, because we don't have a tree in our backyard. I pulled an additional bag's worth of leaves and branches from my gutter. Not from my tree, either. It was from your tree. You know what, Kevin? I didn't complain. I didn't knock on your door and complain. Kevin. Yeah, and... Original poster, we live in suburbia. This stuff happens. They are kids. Kids play outside. I don't want the ball in your yard either. You accuse them of being in your yard. You also accuse them of breaking mulch. How in the world do you break mulch? Are you serious? Really? Karen. Yes, really. Maybe you should learn how to parent your horrible children. 
Original poster just lost it weight for the surprise. Original poster, know what? That's the last time you question me about my parenting. My children are going to grow up and be productive members of our society. I find it comical that you have the audacity to question my parenting seeing how you have a wait for it a 49-year-old son living at your house for the past nine years. I assume it was because of the divorce and the bankruptcy he filed nine years ago. My children are waking your child up. Your child is a jobless 49-year-old man living at home with mom and dad. Is he working on a startup? Prestige worldwide, maybe? Boats and gardening tools. Karen, completely baffled, how do you know any of that? Do you go snooping through our mail too? Original poster, I am good at what I do, and I found everything online. I know you are 69 and lost your license due to a reckless endangerment charge in 2017. I know Kevin Jr. has five different moving violations and one driving under the influence. I also know he was fired from his grounds crew job with the Home Owners Association. I know your husband is 72 and wears the same darn shirt every day, so I can only assume that laundry is not a priority. I know your phone numbers and email accounts I know a lot of stuff about you. Your child is 49 and lives at home. Maybe you should be more worried about your parenting and less about mine. We can have a civil relationship or we can have a war. Just remember this though, I am going to outlive you. They stormed into the house. They were not happy or impressed with my ability to figure stuff out. It was not over for me though. They messed with the wrong person. They were unaware of actions I took to keep the peace. For example, I never let the boys play basketball while they were outside eating dinner. I didn't let them play before 9 or after 7. I tried, but they would play Blair country music and enjoy the gorgeous weather and eat a meal. I never complain about Garth Brooks on volume 100 while I watched the national news. I was teleworking, and I took mischief up as a part-time job now. I have wrestled since I was 4 years old. I was never much of a basketball guy. I am now though. Karen and Kevin had just sat down to enjoy their meal. I don't have to spy either. I can easily see them out my French doors as I watch the national news. I patiently waited for the sloth speed troublemakers to get their outside dinner setting perfectly situated. I could hear Tim McGraw playing when I opened my French doors. I like music too, so I figured I would get my groove and play basketball. Original Poster Alexa Amazon Play Puppies Ain't Nice by Dr. Dre. Alexa, Bleep and Bleep by Dr. Dre. Original Poster, Alexa. Volume 10. I have a new fondness for rap music and the game of basketball. This didn't stop Karen from recording my heathens on a daily basis. I know what I was about to do was petty, but I had zero care to give at that point. I had one last surprise. It was my final card to play an Uno reverse card of sorts. My neighbors, across the street, and my family have bonded. He had a tree removed last week, and I had an epiphany. How much would it cost to trim a large maple tree that overhangs my property? I am not talking a couple branches either, but more like one half of a more than 100-foot tree. I approached the tree removal company and offered them a sizable chunk of change and informed them of my delicate problem. They said, any friend of my neighbor is a friend of theirs. Pro bono. They move their large equipment over to my backyard and take their time getting ready. Guess who came running out of the house? No, not Brad Pitt. Darn. Get your stuff together, reader. Karen and Kevin came running out. Kevin. Hey, buddy. Buddy. Not troublemaker. Not horrible parent. Buddy. Original poster. What can I do for you? Kevin. What are they doing here? Original poster. Oh, them points? Kevin. Yeah. What are they doing? Original poster. Oh, well, they are going to trim the tree? Kevin. Just trim. Original poster. Yep. Just a little trim. Karen, you know that tree was a gift from our daughter, right? We don't want anything drastic. It has been with us for over 40 years now. Kevin. Yeah. It was a gift from our daughter. How much are you thinking about trimming? Original poster. Well, just so you're aware, you understand that I can legally trim anything that overhangs my property. 
I have approval from my lawyer and the Home Owners Association to trim it. Frankly, I care as much about your tree as you do my children's privacy. I could care less. Kevin, how much are you talking about trimming then? Original poster, my property line is here I point, and it extends up I point up to space. I am going to trim every single branch that encroaches my property. So, probably about one-third of your tree. It's going to look really funny when I am done. Oh well. Karen started to cry. It was a really, really ugly cry. There was no more rage left in her. She was defeated. Kevin was defeated as well. This was not my desire. Don't get me wrong, I don't care if she cried, but it was not my intent. Original poster, or you can stop recording my children. Karen, looking like snot-nosed Carol Baskin if I stop recording. Original poster, look, we don't have to like each other because I certainly don't like you guys. My boys never go in your yard, ever. I don't give a hoot if you keep the other basketballs, but I will be darned if you record them ever again. If you do, I will cut your tree down without warning. Kevin, upset thanks bud. Original poster, no worries friend, I am just trying to be neighborly. Just remember, I am dead serious about the tree, and I am pretty certain I will outlive you. Dear reader, I know I am difficult. I know we were both in the wrong at times. I draw the line when a 69-year-old woman sees fit to torment my kids. We have only had one problem since these events occurred. Kevin Jr.'s car sat in the same spot for nine months. I have submitted over 20 home improvement requests to the Home Owners Association, and I am now friends with the wonderful ladies that work there. They periodically inspect neighborhoods and notice the registration on Junior's vehicle was two years outdated and had it towed. Karen accused me of having it towed. We had another colorful conversation, but it ended there. Kevin Jr. is still jobless to this day. I assume he has managed to erect a bunk bed in his childhood bedroom. He has so much more room for activities. Just make sure you don't touch his drum set.